Capitol Hill is an assisted living facility for psychopaths. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. One major problem with media literacy is that everyone is taught to watch out for liberal bias and conservative bias, but nobody is taught to watch out for U.S. empire bias. Two things are clear. It would be completely irrational and insane for the U.S. to go to war with China, and the U.S. is plainly preparing to go to war with China. These two points can appear contradictory, but only if you first assume that the U.S. empire is rational and sane. Here's a tweet by Mark Ames. What the fuck is going on in D.C.? Sharing an article from Compact Mag, The Coming War with China. Quote, There is now open talk in Washington about a potential war with China, and soon. To take just one example, Representatives Mike Waltz and Jason Crow spoke as if war with China is highly probable, even guaranteed, end quote. They're rapidly surrounding China with war machinery, and Biden's pick for the nation's top military position wants to escalate this. What does that look like to you? The only two political views you're allowed to have are A, the U.S. should rule the world with an iron fist, and the biosphere should be fed into the insatiable mouth of capitalism, or B, the U.S. should rule the world with an iron fist, and the biosphere should be fed into the insatiable mouth of capitalism, but racistly. There's a clip of Mitch McConnell inexplicably freezing during a press conference and being quickly escorted away. Capitol Hill is an assisted living facility for psychopaths. It's where people who receive sexual gratification from dropping military explosives on civilians go to wait for the sweet embrace of death. The whole place smells like night terrors and urine. Does it not seem odd to anyone else how it appears we are being drip-fed the mainstream UFO narrative in steadily stranger increments? In 2017, it was... Yeah, there's these craft, and we don't know what they are, but ha ha, we're not saying it's aliens, ha ha ha. Then later it was, oh yeah, they could totally be aliens, because we don't have that kind of tech. And now it's, they're extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional beings, and our government is hiding their dead bodies and reverse-engineering UFOs, and they definitely pose a national security threat. I mean, if you wanted to pace the public from aliens and UFOs are ridiculous tinfoil hat nonsense, to... Aliens and UFOs are real and the government needs to do something about them. I can't imagine it looking much different from what it looked like from 2017 to 2023. I'm not one of those people who thinks everything is a government psyop, but if any single topic was going to be involved in a psyop, it would be UFOs and aliens. Especially since the U.S. government has a known history of using the subject of UFOs and aliens in psyops. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The most extraordinary claims require the most extraordinary evidence. The most extraordinary claims coming from inside a government with an extensive record of lying and psyops require rock-solid proof. This is true of UFOs, and it's true of highly consequential claims about misdeeds by foreign governments made in a post-Iraq invasion world. Back in the day, someone who expressed skepticism of what they were told would be called a doubting Thomas, after the apostle in the Bible who refused to believe Jesus had come back from the dead until he'd seen it himself and personally put his fingers in the wounds from his crucifixion. In the Gospel, Thomas is framed as inferior to those who did not express skepticism, with Jesus himself showing up and telling him that those who believed without having seen are blessed. This is one of many instances in which a foundational scripture of our civilization encourages us to be weak-minded and submissive, which helps explain why so many of us are. We should all have exactly the same attitude as Thomas toward extraordinary claims of potentially immense consequence. I'll believe in the hidden alien bodies when you show them to the public and let an independent panel of scientists verify their authenticity. I'll believe in the Russian election meddling when you show me rock-solid proof that can be independently verified by experts. I'll believe this allegation of genocide or that claim of war crimes once I've been presented with the mountain of proof that rises to the level required in a post-Iraq invasion world. 
Thinking for yourself and distrusting authority is being increasingly shamed and stigmatized in our society, especially in liberal circles, where people are castigated for skepticism in much the same way Jesus castigated Thomas in the Bible story. But we really have no other option when we are ruled by power-hungry tyrants with an extensive documented history of lying to us about issues of immense importance. We need to demand hard proof that we can figuratively place our finger into for ourselves. This is why government transparency is so important. If we could simply see what these people are doing instead of having it all hidden from us behind a thick veil of secrecy, the concept of trust would be a non-issue, because we could see it for ourselves. We would trust the government, not in the way you trust a friend or spouse, but in the same way we trust our senses, As long as we know the truth is being hidden from us, and often aggressively criminalized, and as long as we know they'll feed us lies and manipulations whenever it's convenient, intense skepticism is the only rational position to hold.